Derek Smith, I said it a little bit earlier. South Central does it like nobody does. We're from the same area. Grew up. We met at Redlands. He was a football player. I was not. <laughs> you can see by how he's built. He still looks like he could play football. And, and the rest of us need grace, okay? And uh, so uh, Derek is way up in the public defender's office. Uh, whenever he got it, it seemed like he knew that he wanted to do criminal law. And he's done that his entire career. That's where he's been the whole time. A topic that is in high demand right now. And that is our post-conviction services. Um, right now, the law has been changed and is very favorable for individuals that have criminal records. Uh, the law recognizes that in order for you to provide for yourself, that you need a job, you need housing, you need a way to support um, you and your family. So the law is, is now trying to address that issue. And one of the main things that uh, takes care of that is Penal Code Section 1203.4. Uh, a lot of people will talk about expungement clinics. They call it record clinics. And there's a reason why. Um, an expungement, I'll give you the def definition as uh, written by the American Bar Associates. It's to erase or remove complete. The problem with that is a 1203.4 does not erase your criminal record from your rap sheet. And I'll go into it and explain more about, about that. Um, when a person has satisfied their terms of probation, they've done everything that the court has asked them to, and, and certain criteria are met with that, the law says that you are entitled to have that case dismissed. So my office goes and, and we check the rap sheets, we check the factors for each individual, and those people that are entitled to a dismissal as a matter of right, we help them get that accomplished. Now, there are some exclusions to the 1203.4. Some of those exclusions are the type of charge. There are some very serious charges that are not allowed to be dismissed uh, pursuant to uh, Penal Code Section 1203.4. Um, if you are still on probation, you are not allowed to have a, uh, your record cleared at that point. However, there is 12, uh, Penal Code Section 1203.3, which allows us to help you get your probation terminated early. Certain criteria have to be met for that as well. But if you've been doing well, if you've got a job that's pending, we can make a pretty good argument for you before the court to say, hey, the court, this particular individual has done X, Y, and Z. We think that they're a great candidate to have their probation terminated. And then that allows us, if the court agrees to terminate probation, then we can move forward with the 1203.4, which is um, available to get that, that charge dismissed from your record. Now, if you've been to prison, that is another potential exclusion. It doesn't necessarily mean that everyone that's been to prison cannot have their record uh, dismissed. There are certain provisions, certain people who've gone to prison who can have a 1203.4 uh, granted. Uh, this is a very common question. Does a 1203.4 erase your criminal record? I touched on that earlier. It does not. What it does do is it changes your record where it once said that there was a conviction for a particular charge, it now changes your rap sheet to say that it's a dismissal. So it will still show up on your rap sheet as an arrest, the date, the time, the location, all of that will still show up on your record, but it will now show up as a case that has been dismissed, and which, is, which is important. And people ask, well, what's the point? If it's still gonna show up on my rap sheet, What's the importance of, of, of having that taken care of? Well, if you have a dismissal, jobs that were previously unavailable to you now are available to you. Housing that was previously unavailable to you is now available to you. If you are trying to get your license with the uh, California State Real Estate Board, you are now able to go and fill out an application and apply for that licensing. Now, because that is a government agency, you cannot say, oh, I don't have any prior convictions. But what you can say is, I have a prior conviction. 
but that prior conviction has been dismissed. And there is a distinction with what you can tell a government agency about total three point four and what you can tell a private agency. If you are applying for jobs at a private entity and they ask about prior conviction and you've had a twelve three point four granted on a particular case, you can tell that private entity that you do not have a prior conviction. Now that's different if you're applying to become a police officer. If you're applying to be um, an employee at a local government agency, if you work trying to get a job for the county, if you're trying to get a job for the state, if you apply to one of these governmental agencies, you have to answer that differently. You have to say, I have a prior conviction. But what you also should share is, although I have this prior conviction, I have a total 3.4 that was granted and this case has now been dismissed. And with that disclosure, Again, the law is shifting to recognize that everyone needs to have an opportunity to provide for themselves and their family. So they're trying to address that. If you have been rehabilitated, if you have a conviction from 20 years ago, and those 20 year old convictions were hurting people from getting jobs, from getting housing, now you can move in a different space and try and get that job that you were prevented from getting before. Uh, so it, it's very important, and, and I encourage everyone to reach out to an attorney and you really should all of their exclusions you should talk to an attorney about how that exclusion affects you um, don't listen to what i'm telling you because i'm giving just a general presentation about uh, 1203.4 and its impact and, and its exclusions but everyone has a different set of facts and so you should speak to an attorney about your particular facts and how that plays into whether you are excluded from 1203.4 or you're eligible for 1203.4. Um, so, some people will ask, well, what if I'm not eligible for a 1203.4? And that's often the case. And if you're not eligible for a 1203.4, uh, there is a another a way that you can get something to help you with the record, and that's called a certificate of rehabilitation. And there's an application process, and there are certain criteria that you also have to meet with a certificate of rehabilitation. Um, what are the benefits of a certificate of rehabilitation? because you're not getting a dismissal of that particular charge. But what it does is it allows employers, it allows the licensing board, the opportunity to see that a court has made a determination that you have been re rehabilitated. Because in order for a, a certificate of rehabilitation, you have to do an application process. You have to go through, I'll get you in a second, you have to go through um, the court system and the judge makes a decision as whether to grant the certificate of rehabilitation. So if the court grants that certificate of rehabilitation, there's another thing that happens. You are automatically then sent, your information is sent to the governor's office for a pardon application. So certificate of rehabilitation starts an automatic process for a pardon. So that's very beneficial. And, and generally what the courts want to see is they want to see what you've done after your conviction. Um, there are certain residency requirements. If you're in California, you have to be a resident of California for five years prior to applying for the Certificate of Rehabilitation. You have to be free from prison for uh, seven years. And then you also have to have had a case that sent you to state prison or certain um, significant misdemeanors also make you eligible for a certificate of rehabilitation when you would have been ineligible for a 1203.4. Um, yes, sir, you had a question. Who issues the certificate of rehabilitation? Does the court issue it? Does the CDCR issue it? Or who's the authority that says you've been rehabilitated? It's a court order. Okay, so who, what, where do I go? Like, like Google it and say, okay, I'm going to go to this agency and this agency. So who's the agency that issues the certificate? It, 
If you have a case in San Bernardino County, you can reach out to the San Bernardino County Public Defender's Office. We have a unit, post-conviction unit, that deals primarily with a certificate of rehabilitation. There's an information packet. We send that out to you. You fill out that information, and we walk you through the steps. We file it with the court. There's a court date. On that court date, we provide the court with all the uh, supporting information that they need to help you in your process. And then you have a date before that court. That court uh, either decides they're going to grant that certificate of rehabilitation or deny it. So there's no third party agency that does this? There are, there are private companies that do it. Um, but why not go to one of the best? <laughs> <laughs> Straight to the source, I understand. Yeah, yes, sir. For the public to know where to go, because you know, it's not for me. But, you know. Yeah, you can, you can look. <laughs> the councilman's claim. <laughs> be good. We're telling you about my rap. You, about my rap. <laughs> yes. Yes. you, you can look on the, on the state website, and there is information about a certificate uh, of rehabilitation on the state's website. Okay, sounds good. Yes. Also, I would just like to refer people and recommend highly to get involved with the local nonprofit. I've been in town now for 14 years, and for 13 of those, I've been on the advisory board for Time for Change Foundation. And Kim Carter and her group just does so much good, and they can help you help others. And um, she's now moved up to Northern California, and we're spreading our work around. I've helped them raise over six figures. And um, there are some good and there are some really horrible, really horrible nonprofits. And you can talk to me afterwards because, as everybody knows, I'm pretty outspoken in the city of San Bernardino and beyond. But um, we have to work together and we all need to give back. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the question then follows. Well, what if I'm not eligible or what if I don't have a certificate of rehabilitation um, granted? There is also an application process where you can apply to the governor's office for a pardon. Um, I can tell you that there is no time frame set in stone in which a pardon has to be addressed. Um, and so it could, you could file that p petition um, with the governor's office and it may sit there for years. So there, there is no time frame in which they have to respond to, um, to that petition for a, uh, for a pardon. Um, but if I give you any piece of advice, the best piece of advice I can give you today is if you are interested in having your record cleared, speak with an attorney about your particular situation. Um, don't listen to the generals that I've shared today. Um, this is just me sharing nuggets of information, but to really deal with your particular situation, you need to speak with an attorney. Uh, because there have been times when people think that they aren't eligible, but then they are eligible because they fall into a, a special category or they, they check off certain boxes. So the best information I can give you today, if you know someone, if you personally uh, would like to have your record clear, speak with an attorney about your particular situation uh, so that we can at least do an evaluation of your factors and let you know what you're eligible for. All right? Any other questions? No, yeah. actually, I'll, I'll get a little personal. So my son had a drinking problem years back and caught some DUIs. And we were able to hire an attorney and go ahead and get the expungements for him. And now he's working with Utah Department of Corrections. Uh -huh. So in fact, that program or that, or that expungement really does work. I, I can share uh, just recently uh, an individual was, was pretty desperate um, asking for help saying that he you know wasn't able to find a job um, and, and this this may be on on some of our social media but this this particular individual um, said that he was homeless said that uh, he wasn't able to get a job he went through our process and now with his uh, union he's now eligible uh, for positions paying upwards of thirty dollars an hour so that's a huge swing from you know just months mm -hmm. before where he couldn't find a job, uh, couldn't hold down housing uh, because of his situation to have his record clear and then doors start to open up. So it's absolutely an invaluable uh, service that we, that we offer and that we've um, sort of honed our skills over the past several years 
and we do a fairly good job. And within this particular county, we're still evolving with our process and how frequently uh, we get our cases into court. Um, and so it's, it's a really invaluable service that I think that if you have a family member, a friend, anyone, re refer them to us so that we can at least examine uh, their situation and, and try and help them out. You guys are so good. And you can ask the public defender's office to come out. And I've had them like for my, uh, we need to have them for Rotary. I've had them come out to my uh, Black Chamber of Commerce group. And they did a two hour presentation and it was in depth and I mean they, they you guys just give of yourselves and um, I got involved I've been in the city for 14 years 13 years ago little Anthony Ramirez was murdered over at um, Martin Luther King and that's how I got involved in the city and people just think I'm out to get rid of the jerks and the crooks in San Bernardino and I am and I'm working on it again <laughs> um, Pastor Beckley and I work together very closely but this PD office, I've, I've lived in 14 cities around the world, and this is the best PD public defender's office I've ever worked with. And I'm just, I'm just a huge fan of you guys. And they will come out and give, like I said, a two-hour lecture. And they bring a whole crew with them. And you learn so much. You learn so much. Yeah, we're, I mean, we are a, a service for the community. Um, and. I share this as often as I can. Um, you know, other people may see my clients as criminals and, and bad people. I see them as clients. Um, everyone needs to have someone fighting in their corner. And that's what I do. And I wake up every morning and I enjoy it. And so I recognize who some of my clients are, but at the same time, they need someone to advocate on their, their behalf so that the right punishment happens if that's what is appropriate. And if they've been wrongfully um, charged, I need to do everything in my power to, to make sure that everyone understands that they've been wrongly uh, charged. So um, it's a service that, that we provide, and there are some very, very skilled attorneys in our office. Um, I am proud to associate with this office. Uh, I've been in this office for uh, 14 years, and I, I think I might be around for a little longer. <laughs> And, and if you have any questions, I, I'm available to answer any questions about um, our post-conviction or uh, record clearing, if you have any. Let me quickly ask Derek, thanks for coming. Um, what can you tell people about how little or how much things have changed in terms of getting cases to trial, some of the timing and some of those kinds of issues uh, with COVID? How has that changed? Is it still a moving target? If somebody has a case and an issue in the situation, they get arrested, God forbid, is their case going to get to trial as quickly as it would have if it was filed a year and a half, two years ago? Are we in the same place or is it changing? Not at this time. Um, there is a backlog of cases from the past year and a half. Uh, depending on which courthouse your case is in, uh, the last numbers that I was given in Victorville, I think they're only doing one trial at a time. Yeah. So there's, there's two trial departments I think they're actively um, handling criminal cases right now and they're alternating so only one of those trials is going out at a time. Uh, I think Rancho is a little bit different. They've been getting some cases out, but it's not as fast as cases were going out prior to COVID. Um, just, I think there's a change going into place on Monday where you're back to wearing a mask if you enter a courthouse. So throughout the county starting Monday, everyone has to wear a mask whether you are vaccinated or not. Um, and so that's a change that was relaxed recently, but the calendars are still limited because of um, capacity. Uh, they're limited with the ability to actually have our clients in court, have uh, public in court. So all of that has had an impact in the jury panels. All of these things have been affected by COVID. So yeah, it's, it's delayed. There's a, a tremendous backlog and we thought that things were going to start moving because the um, move by California to loosen restrictions, but it appears that that's going to slow back down uh, starting with the uh, with the changes coming up yes. what did you decide to go into what were you doing before? 
Um, well, as Joe mentioned, I'm a, a product of South Central Los Angeles. Um, I grew up in inner cities. Um, I've had interactions with law enforcement. I spent some time in the district attorney's office in San Francisco when uh, I was in law school. I also had an opportunity to spend some time in the public defender's office while I was in law school, and the public defender's office was home for me. I mean, I felt it. I knew that the work called me, and so it was a natural transition to once I finished law school to uh, go to the public defender's office. That's so amazing. What's it crack like? I don't know. It's not this mic. Any other questions? Right, that mic is not that mic. Might be that one sitting over there. Okay. All right, Derek, my man, appreciate you. All right, all right. Thank you for having me. So, info is power, like we always say, sir. Um, and some of us are uh, many years out of school, and we're still trying to figure out what we want to do in the law. Uh, Derek, I can actually say with a lot of certainty, was that once he made up his mind he wanted to do criminal, that's what he wanted to do. That's why he's done it his whole career. I've been all over the place, but he's been very certain about what he wanted to do. Did you want to add something? There was a question that was asked. Oh, yes, 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 yes that's right. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and address that. So the, the question was, and, and um, you can clarify if, if I was. Should we put him on another mic real fast? Yeah. Give it that one. Turn that one off. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're right. Sorry about that. Goes that one up. Yep. So I'm going to try to recite the question. I believe the question is, if a person was arrested in Los Angeles County, they've gone to prison, it's about time for them to parole, but family lives in San Bernardino County. Now, the way that parole works is you are paroled to the location of your last legal residence. So if, if the individual if their residence was in San Bernardino County prior to the arrest, um, then they would, they would be paroled to San Bernardino County, regardless of where the arrest took place. Now, if their last legal residence was in Los Angeles County, um, that's traditionally where they would be paroled. However, if that particular um, location no longer has family or that person would not be able to survive, they could have a discussion with the parole board and say, my family and my, my uh, support is going to be in San Bernardino County. Um, can I be paroled to San Bernardino County? And they may do some research to see who that family is and what that means of support is going to be so that they can make that adjustment and parole that, um, that person to that location where family is. And, and that's, that's in Penal Code Section 3003. Uh, it covers the parole um, residency requirements. Riverside County actually has on their website positions where they're felon friendly. Um, I mean, we have places in San Bernardino that we work with that will accept, but San Riverside County actually has a place on their website for the city where they are, or maybe it's the county, where they are specifically felon friendly and they're willing to go beyond a second chance. Okay. So I, I'm hoping that's something that we can do in San Bernardino. But the other thing is everybody's got to, it's not enough to vote. You've got to get a lot of people out registered to vote. Sure. And so we, we had an event at the uh, Worldway Outreach Church a oh, couple yeah. months ago. Yeah. And then that's one of the things that we did is that we had someone there trying to get uh, folks registered uh, to vote. So that is something that's absolutely important. And I think, Joe, we did a podcast and I talked about um, voting and, and showing up for jury duty. So that, that's important because if, if you're not. Eight years ago, one of my best friends, Gigi Hanna, ran for a city clerk. She won originally by two votes in the city of 225,000. She won by two votes. And that was with the former city attorney promoting the other gal. And uh, we worked our asses off on that one. And um, nice. it's, okay. it's, I mean, you know what? I should have a smaller butt than I do for how hard I work. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, it's voting, it's, it's people go, oh, I'm voting. I go, it's not enough to vote. You've got to go out and you've got to get a lot of people signed up and take them and take them to the polls. 
because this next election coming up next year, we could be in bankruptcy again in the city of San Bernardino. Mm -hmm. We're not that far off. All right, so uh, house cleaning to end. Those of you that have watched online or otherwise that RSVP'd, we have an email for you. We're going to get you resources. I will make sure that all of our, our speakers are CC'd, former and current. Linda was prominent in our speech before our, our last event. We'll make sure everybody has that information. Um, this will be available as an on-demand product. People can get it, get the information. So link it, send it to people that need to see it, folks that didn't, um, folks that didn't catch us. Uh, again, I want to thank um, uh, the ECF family for really uh, being making us a home here and allowing us to do it. Um, you know, when your tech guys aren't complaining and everything's in order, then you know it's really good. They're super professional. They put it together. Great job for ECF. Thank you guys for all of that that helped us with that. Thanks, Pastor Begley. Thanks to everybody else that came out and intended. Folks that watched, all our guests, and uh, we will just see everybody soon. Info is power, so keep getting information so that we stay powerful. The day should be over where you're not able to find the information you need related to these issues. We are dedicated to keeping you out of that situation. So let's make sure that we do it and we go forward from there. All right, thanks everybody for coming, appreciate it.